I had this burning desire for years and years that acoustics and audiovisual really have to come together. In the early 70s, I became very good friends with Hubert Wilkie, owner of Wilkie Organization, the only audiovisual consulting firm at the time. So I gave him a call. I said, Hubie, we will get there being audiovisual consultants by ourselves. But with you, we will get there a lot faster. We were very fortunate to uh, have a new project assignment from IMP and Partners for the 70-story Bank of China Tower in Hong Kong. In 1989, there was a need for a site visit. That, of course, is going back to Hong Kong, where I grew up before coming to this country for college. I could sense that the ground was moving, the economy was busting open. I said to myself, we ought to have a presence in that part of the world at that time. After opening the, the Hong Kong office, I got a call from KPF and he said, Fred, we are having a meeting here about a large project in London. We would like you to come over and join us. And what they were talking about was developing a Class A office tower area called Canary Wharf. It turned out what they were concerned about was the Docklands Light Rail an existing rail system that meanders through the uh, wharf area where they have the idea of building the Class A office buildings. And they're concerned about the noise from the DLR, Docklands Light Rail. I said, well, we have two uh, partners of mine who is in London right now working on a Goldman Sachs project on Fleet Street. I'm gonna ask them to sample some sound readings. A few hours later, I got a call and they told me that they measured 102 dBs. What Dennis said was, Fred, we could feel it in our ribs. That was it, that's all I needed to hear, and I knew how severe the problem was. So why did we extend our services into IT? We just felt that IT is coming down the street, turning the corner, and we're gonna meet head on pretty soon. Our San Francisco manager decided that he and his family want to uh, migrate to Toronto where they have other parts of their family. San Francisco being the only office in the left coast, we had to have a good plan to fill that void. Uh, we were making the long-term plans and what came out of that was to select Tom to go out there. I was quite confident that Tom was the right choice. He had established client relationship and got himself some incredible projects. He built enough relationship to win a major project in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. King Abdullah wanted to build a university for women, Princess Nora University, a project that consisted of about 37 million square feet of construction, a project that took about five and a half years, and it was the largest project, the biggest contract we've ever had. With that under Tom's belt, I thought when he comes back, people will recognize that he can very well be the future leader of the firm. Then came a project, York Avenue and 70th Street. INEA designed this incredible building for Wild Cornell Medical Center. And in it is a major simulation center to teach future surgeons and doctors. And while we were busy planning how IT should network with AV to support this equipment standing there and functioning. We saw that that equipment represents the second largest budget in a hospital project. And if we were to also learn to do that with expertise, wouldn't that be wonderful? That we will have that entire package, almost 30 years, a lot has happened. But when I think about my own contribution to the firm, what stands out in my mind is to bring the specialty disciplines of acoustics and audiovisual, IT, IT systems, security planning, and finally medical equipment planning, which is the biggest discipline, together to serve our clients, to ensure that healthcare facilities would be achieving their goals to improve quality of service to patients.